Hello everybody, this is Alex, also known as Solomon's Dracone, and welcome back to Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey. Who the frick is texting me? Why would they text me? It's an auto thing, they want my money. Okay, go straight to hell. Okay, so then, uh, we are at the uh, Rocky Tarn Oasis, and I'd like to uh, get back to the Tuttle now, so to speak. So I'm going to put a regular adult monkey as the lead because he got more stams. And uh, this is what you want to do whenever you're about to set on a trip. Grab a stick and ook. And hopefully everybody grabs a stick. Yeah, it looks like they all more or less are coming with on this one here. They'll just go out wherever sticks are and grab them and come back. I'm going to just summon the whole clan. Alright, so switch a nuke. And strip a nuke. And switch again a nuke. Now the hope is, even though I haven't developed this talent yet, or rather this perk, is that uh, they will be able to defend themselves a little bit. I haven't developed it, but that doesn't mean I won't. Now when leaving this ground, um, it's best not to go all the way over there, because as you can see there's a snake down there, and uh, these apes have a, uh, a habit of running into the snake and getting hurt, so it's best to just go down this way. And, you know, however they make it down, they make it down. So it's just a trip back to the uh, tunnel mouth. And I'm intimidating him just to uh, get him to, uh, you know, bugger off. Let's just continue trying to get back to that home that we like. For some reason, I don't know why it just loses that tag on occasion. So make the tag whenever you can and try to keep it there so you can always find your way back no matter where you are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rejoin you back at the Tunnel Mouth Oasis. You've seen this journey before and uh, I'll get back to you when I'm ready to proceed. Okay, and I'm back and that actually took like 25 minutes. Basically, I got everybody to the new campsite and uh, I also did a little bit of tidying up. Uh, so this is kind of my setup here. Over here is my little medicine area. I've got the uh, got the orange stuff, the blue stuff, the green stuff, and the red stuff. Those are my uh, my little buff things so that I get to go out. Also brought a nice little pile of basalt choppers and a nice little pile of sticks. Today's mission is going to be to get in some trouble. So preparing for a mission. I'm going to take one of each of these uh, medicines and gobble. And this last one I'm going to rub it on myself. So what we are going to do today is to get our attack and dodge skills up. Because right now, Monkey can't defend themselves when they're following me. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, grab a stick and a chopper. And I'm going to bring a couple of uh, others along with me. Now, um, they're very likely to uh, get caught by the cat. Because the stalker is still out there. But, um, I'm hoping to teach us just a couple of, uh, couple of moves for defending ourselves. So I only need two of these guys to come along with me. And let's go ahead and track down some baddies to fight. Now, this is not going to be all about killing, although there's going to be plenty of that. But, um, right now we're trying to earn some evolution points, because we want our next evolution to tip us into the next species, if at all possible. So, to that effect, I'm going to go, like I said, seeking out trouble. Now, I know that for a fact... A black machiritus hangs out in this area. He's got a couple nests that he's going to uh, frequent. But I've got protection against bleeding, against broken bones, against food poisoning, venom, and cold. Just from those four things that I uh, took care of down there. 
And here's the idea, all right? We find ourselves an aggressor. We get up to them, and what you want to do is any new enemy, you want to dodge them twice. Before you go killing an enemy, make sure you dodge them twice. You only have to do that once per species, but uh, you definitely want to, um, you know, make sure you're dodging each enemy twice. Okay. And that's why you bring friends with you. I got caught. Yeah, that's not the greatest situation in the world, because that sucker is sitting on top of my weapons. And as you can see right now, I am in uh, panic mode. So that means uncontrollably I'm running around. Maybe I can have a little bit of say in which direction I run. But uh, that's what happens when you have repeated attacks happening. So that was a poorly planned out move. I'm going to give that to the buddy. And I don't know if it's the snake that's, that's coming back or if it's a stalker. But um, yeah, there's, there's going to be some fun. Yeah, it's the stalker. All right. So he got me. And just trying to trying to intimidate the stalker is going to result in uh, nothing good happening. So I'm gonna try and bonk it. That obviously did not go very well. At the very least, I got my two dodges off on the snake, so that means that now at least uh, the snake I have dodged. And that means that, uh, you know, I don't have to worry about dodging the snake again. But as you can see, I suffered for it. So, um, yeah, let's let's do the penance. And I'm going to get this bone out of here because that bone got in the way more than it helped. Real quick, though, I'm going to grab this and sniff it. Because that's the kind of food that I haven't found yet. And I'm just going to eat it to get my dopamine back up. Sounds like the Black Machiridus is back at it. And of course, since I ate those, then these guys are going to come up and eat some as well. So I might as well try to get my double dodge off on the Black Machiridus. Each type of Machiridus counts as a different one for those purposes. But I dodged it once. I dodged it again. And uh, that means that I've uh, done all the dodges I need to against the Black Machiridus. you got to be careful of the direction you're dodging. Sometimes you may not have the option to grab the weapon you dropped. But at the very least, if you can grab a weapon and scare them away, do so. Because it's worth something. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up this bone and this rock. Because I don't need things just laying around all over the place. I'm at least going to put them closer to the spring here. Okay, so those two guys are injured. I, I was saved from having bleeding injury because I had uh, rubbed the... I'd rubbed the green paste on me. Alright, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get my dude's uh, bleed proof. Or at least de-bleed them. So here, it's a waste of a green paste just to uh, get rid of bleeding effect. Simply because it'll do the job. It'll stop the bleeding. Now this guy suffered worse because he got attacked twice. Actually, that's a lady, but you know, don't tell anybody. So that one suffered worse because they got attacked twice, thusly uh, in acquiring the hemorrhaging effect, which is like bleeding, but more so. So let's see if we can't, you know, just at least go finish off that snake. No, snake is gone. But that's your general idea. Find an enemy type and uh, give it a double dodge, and then uh, try to kill it if you can. The double dodge counts as an evolution feat, and the killing counts as an evolution feat. And I want to try and uh, get some feats under my belt. So there's a, a number of animals around here 
that uh, I could practice on. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this guy dead. You pass away. No, wait. And unfortunately, I didn't kill him on that strike, but I've still got a rock. And you can kill a snake with a rock. Good. So I've got that kill under my belt. And am I still holding the rock? Yes, I am. So let's sniff the snack. And let's just go ahead and butcher the snack as well. Alright, snack butchered. Let me drop my rock over here somewhere that uh, is not right on top of the snack because in case another enemy comes along I want to have plenty of space to dodge. So I can go for it. So I'm gonna grab up the meat and give it a sniff so that I can identify it. And that is oviparous meat. Snake meat is white meat, I guess. Okay, that snake has been completely yanked clean of all the meat that I can get from its carcass, even though there are clearly a ton more carcass to carve meat from, this is all I can get from it. And I'm doing this just so that I can get a pile of <clears throat> oviparous flesh in uh, addition to the mammal flesh that I've gotten. You see, that mammal flesh pile is still there. We'll talk about it soon. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a small pile of the meat. And I don't think I've eaten an egg after gaining a talent for it, so go ahead and eat that egg. Remember, after you unlock the perk for being able to digest the meat, you have to uh, eat the meat, or you have to eat the thing in order to uh, get a an evolution point for actually doing it. I just told you guys to switch hands and you didn't do it. I guess you did. Okay, so that's a pile of snake meat. That'll do. Now it's running late, and we're kind of in, uh, in stalker danger, but I feel okay just going ahead laying down here because if a stalker does come upon me in the middle of the night, I'll be able to jump away and grab my stick. There are three more enemies that I want to track down and do the thing with. So, not skipping this one, because we ac I actually did get a few, uh, I did get a few uh, neuronal pathway unlocked situations there. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unlock those uh, before I go out on the journey. Oh, look, there he is. Dodge. Where the hell is my weapon? That'll do. And bonk the tiger. Now you notice he's got a stick in him. Uh, he'll keep that stick in him until he's killed. And oh, that is that is fantastic. I love seeing that. He ran into Big Snack, and Big Snack took care of the tiger for us. So yeah, now we don't have to worry about the stalker anymore. Big Snack is still there, but, you know, screw off, Big Snack. And we got some communication going for us. Good, good, good. All right, now is the time to go back and uh, lock in what we've learned. So I'm real quick just going to go ahead and uh, heal up my poor dude that got uh, bloodied. And if you're unsure which one, I mean, they're going to be covered in blood and, and, you know, touching themselves. But uh, if you're unclear, you can just highlight, and the red mark means hemorrhaging. When that's red, it's hemorrhaging. When it's uh, white, it's not. Are you still hemorrhaging, bud? Okay, no, you're, you're fine. That might have been a female. Anyways, back to the nest. Not going to cut this part out. It's right there, and we're about to unlock some perks. And if we unlock six perks, they, uh, the rules are... Go ahead and uh, pass the generation, because we're not going out hunting more meteors right now.
Okay, that's a that's a number of perks unlocked. Okay, that is a goodly number. Not worried about the laceration prevention. Uh, not worried about that. Uh, not worried about that. The the extra shielding time, I'm not worried about. Um, that actually, I'm not in intimidation mode. I'm in fight mode, so don't need deeper sleep. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a battle skill. Everything on this left side here is battle skills. Let's just pop every bubble. Ah, once connected, the clan members will have the ability to defend themselves provided they have a weapon. That's one of the things I wanted. That means that if one of your monkeys has a weapon in their hand, then they will take a stab at whatever's attacking them, which is good. Uh, tolerance to undergo successive attacks is probably good because you saw how fast our dopamine drained there. Uh, okay, that's not what you sold me on, but whatever. Uh, ch chances of dropping an item following a dodge decreasing are really good. You saw how much I was dropping there. And preparation speed for a dodge. I'll go ahead and up that. So let's pop these bubbles before we run out of the energy to do it with. Uh, success of an attack is good. Uh, success of an alteration without a tool, we can have it. Uh, this one, we want to go ahead and keep moving towards, but we are out of neuronal energy. So, how many skills can we reinforce right now? Let's, uh, let's see. I can get one more skill to reinforce. But I don't have the energy to do it. So, alright. Um, hmm. Actually, uh, a quick way to build up neuronal energy is to uh, pick up a pile and start walking with it. Okay, that didn't do quite as much as I thought it would. So let's see. Uh, well, walking upright in water. That, that does it. Yeah, I'm learning some of this is not nearly enough. Okay. So let's, uh, let's just go out and seek a little bit more trouble. Grab a pointy stick. Grab a rock, and let's go find someone else to uh, mess with their day. Okay, um, most of my buffs are gone right now, almost, but I'm just going to chance it. I don't actually foresee much chance of uh, getting killed out here. But boy, oh boy, are we, uh, are we lowering on our stamina here. I should have taken the opportunity to eat up and whatnot, but... Nah, son, nah. We, we gotta do some stuff. So, we've gotten Black Bacchiridus and uh, White Bacchiridus both dead and dodged twice. And that's about all we're worried about doing with those. Because we killed Black Bacchiridus in another episode. And that, you know, we already got that. So, there's another enemy that tends to frequent this area around here. Another good way of uh, getting getting some uh, eight, some neuronal energy, believe it or not, is eating. Apparently, though, eating isn't going to cut it for me. Boy, I'm not learning a dang thing. Normally, when I eat, I gain uh, neuronal energy, but I guess I've gone past that point for eating things, and it's kind of slow and kind of quick at the same time. Let's see, I know that there's an enemy around here somewhere. We're not necessarily going to hear it, but I see it in the distance over there. This enemy is not that bad, but I'm still freaked out by it. Alright. I know he's right over there, and he has seen me. That is the Megarian Centipede. They are aggressive, they are nasty, and you cannot hit them with rocks or with bones. So, dodge once. Still got my stuff. He's gonna try to run away. Dodge again. Didn't drop my stuff. Yes, I did. And now the kicker. Typically, I can get these guys as a one-shot kill. They're usually pretty easy to kill. 
So let's chase him down. And... Come on! And a really cool monkey move. Stab! Mm. Yeah! I have monkey hear me roar. So I killed it. I'm sniffing it. And I'm not going to bother butchering it because it's just more oviparous flesh. It's not worth killing. So, yay. Gaining more skills. Gaining a wee bit more neuronal energy. There are two more enemy types that I am pretty sure I can locate. Just a heads up, if you're uh, if you're doing the ook method of uh, doing sticks, remember you've got to ook after you've changed a dead branch into a regular stick, and then you have to ook after you've changed a stick into a sharpened stick. They will not follow that entire complete path. Alright, that is most certainly an enemy, but it's a kitty, and I'm not as interested in kitties. Still, might be able to scare them off. So hold on, let me uh, regen a little bit of Stam Stams. And... Rargh! No! He wants a piece! Didn't work, but at least he's gotten the message and is moving on. Alright, so what I was just talking about, let's go ahead and demonstrate that. Everybody grab a basalt. Everybody, grab another basalt. Well, hold on. I thought, what? Oh, now you're doing it? Okay. Sometimes they are slightly delayed and, oh my god. Here, take the hecking rock. Yeah, I know, you're tired, you're thirsty, whatever, I don't care. I am harsh task monkey master, so let's go ahead and just make ourselves some basalt choppers. I hear some boars. Swap an ook. It's probably a good idea to let every one of your group have, uh, you know, one chopper slash slicer and uh, one stick. Okay. Drop the rocks we don't need. Grab stick, or grab branch, rather. Alright, so uh, as I was saying, do an alteration to get from branch to stick, and stop an ook. And then turn stick to sharp stick. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. They're not going to go all the way from dead branch to sharp stick. Okay, so these are boars. I could sniff them out, but it doesn't doesn't really matter. One dodge. Let me see if I can... Uh, yep, another dodge. I've just double dodged giant warthog. Got that uh, out of the way. And, you know, that's honestly fine for the moment, because if I can uh, just kill them on the next go-around, that'll be fine. Hey, you! And you also get feats for making animals kill other animals, too. Like, if that guy happened to run into uh, one of those warthogs, they were going to come to blows. So, yeah, just basically building up my attack capabilities. And if we happen to run across a uh, zone of a, you know, fearful nature, fear of the unknown, 
then, you know, that's just bonus. We can, we can totally max out our meter on that. So I'm happy with just having dodged the pig twice. I don't need to worry about uh, making anything more of it. Things are starting to get a little bit hungry now, though, but, you know, pushing it is what it's all about. Sometimes you just gotta grin and bear it. Doing any interaction whatsoever with an animal you haven't seen before will actually uh, let you discover that animal. Like, if you intimidate or dodge an animal, it automatically identifies that animal for you. Likewise, if you attack. So let's just go ahead and find uh, one more thing. And I'm kind of neglecting something I shouldn't be, which is discovering. So I know there's no other zones in the uh, woodlands area, or no other places at least in the woodland area, where I can trigger a meteorite. At least not that I'm aware of. And I'm not in the mood to deal with snack, so snack off. But I'm in rough shape, and frankly, all my lads need to eat. Well, okay, never mind. Let me just take your stuff, and I'll pile it up for you. It can be hard to keep track sometimes of what you got. Alright, guys. Everybody grab an egg. And let's all eat the egg. As soon as you eat something, they'll start eating it automatically. You don't need to tell them. And we've got a uh, lovely cap tree over here. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that. large part of our problem is our hunger right now. No matter what you eat, there is going to be a certain amount of water to it. So, you know, just get your get your stamina meter up as, uh, as far as you uh, feel like you need to. And uh, let's get back on the horse, guys. It's gonna be literally that in a moment. Grab stick, grab rock. And remember, if you've got two weapons, it's the one in your right hand that you attack with. Now, there are two more creatures that I'm aware of in this direction that uh, I can mess around with. I'm not going to bother with the hog. Snack might be a problem. Oh, but we did intimidate a giant warthog, so that's nice. We intentionally intimidated them. Okay. Yeah, that's just a snake. But there are enemies in the in this pond. And apparently we haven't met that one yet. I know what that one is, but let's go over and cause trouble with it. I told you I'd be I'd be looking for trouble. Yeah, it sees me. Hey, big guy. Come on. Okay, the crocodile didn't want to play with us. I decided just to go ahead and uh, intimidate it. But yes, that's three things you want to do with each creature you encounter. Dodge, intimidate, and kill. Do it once, at least, with each key creature, and you are earning your evolution points. So, Snack is still going this way. I haven't encountered Hyena on this journey, but I'm not really intending to encounter Hyena on this journey unless I see them, in which case it's go time. I'm still not quite 100% up to battle readiness. But there are... Ooh, there's the Hyenas. Let's, uh, let's risk something here. Who sees us? Horsies see us. But you know, horsies I can mess with. Let's go mess with horsies. 
they're not a big problem. They, uh, they'll actually turn and run from you. But you can get them to uh, at least turn around and attempt to have a go at you if you chase them down. Now, unfortunately, I'm still dropping stuff on the dodge. So just, you know, keep exercising that. Keep, uh, keep dodging, and eventually uh, you'll have less problem with uh, dropping while dodging. I'm not fast enough to keep up with the horsies, though. But I do want neuronal energy, so let's, uh... Since we're in the area of the unknown right now, let's go ahead and do what we can. Okay, smell time. And if it's something we know what it is, even if it's threatening, we can at least, uh, you know, we can at least identify it. Now we're we're running low on dopamine here, and uh, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, that's a problem because I'm now under hysteria or panic. So I need to get back to that white dot before it becomes full-on hysteria and I end up all the way back at the nest. So let's, uh, let's just get the hell out of Dodge and nope, hysteria has taken me. Fortunately, the uh, consequences of hysteria are just get teleported back to your home. Not as bad as it could be. I'm hoping everybody has come home with me. Yeah, it looks like the whole the whole crew is here. But I think you get the point. I think you get the idea of uh, what's going on there. Just, uh, you know, go out, pick a fight with an enemy, dodge them twice, kill one, and maybe intimidate them before killing them. I'm in pretty bad shape, though, so I think... That's probably a good place to cut it. This is going to be one of the shorter episodes. But let's just go ahead and see what we can unlock before we move on to the next level. Remember, always pop the bubbles before you go committing to something. Unless you know for a fact it's something you want. Uh, preparation speed, not as big a deal. Undergo successive attacks would be nice. Preparation for dodge. Okay, that's, that's good too. So let's see, this right here... I want the success rate of an attack to increase. I want to, you know, not break my stick on them. I want to bury my stick in them. That sounded weird. Uh, more successful attack rate. And what's this? Uh, yeah, we, we definitely want to decrease the chances of dropping an item. I know, we've, we've expanded a whole bunch of other stuff, but, you know, there's stuff you can leave behind. Let's, uh, try to get this. Not enough neuronal energy. The more neurons involved with, uh, getting a skill, the, um, more neuronal energy you need. But, I think I've made enough improvements that, uh, I can just go ahead and commit. Basically, I want these six skills, so... Let's just go ahead and skip that generation, folks. So I'm in the middle of making the babies, and my last single male and my last single female are family related. So even if I groom them, nothing. So I'm gonna have to uh, gonna have to outsource this to Grandpa. We're gonna have to make a uh, bit of a May June relationship here, or May December relationship. So, you know, gotta have the babies. If you don't have the babies, you don't get the neuronal energy. You don't get the reinforcements. So let's just go ahead and make old man babies with young lady. That's okay. This dude, uh, Nab is his name. He's still strong. He's still strong enough to, uh, to make it happen. Elder males can still uh, mate with younger females, as disturbing as that may be. It's survival. It's it's life. So just making the babies and just getting those mutations. That omnivore is actually going to be quite useful for my next generation. And even though old man here is the father, the brother is going to take care of the kids. 
Okay, so you all can go to hell. I skipped a generation, but we still had plenty of stuff to uh, unlock, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, gather up some extra neuronal energy from all the corpses around here. Just uh, kind of put the target on them and proceed to them. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, pass this generation by uh, maxing out as many skills as I can. So just find all the uh, dead ancestor remains. And just do it up with the neuronal energy. Alright. Marked. Marked. And not that. That. Mark. So all three are marked. I can find them more easily. And just getting near to them drops the mark. So I'm full up on neuronal energy. I'll save that uh, last corpse there for, uh, you know, if I happen not to have enough. But let's just go ahead and uh, get a few more uh, tricks under our belt. So I do want moving on two legs to be possible. Because that makes something else possible. And yeah, plus that genetic mutation, uh, which is currently on one of the adults, that hasn't been realized yet. So I don't need success and alteration. Don't need success and alteration. I definitely want to uh, decrease the likelihood of dropping stuff, so let's just go ahead and earn our points. Preparation speed for dodge. And that opens this back up. Plenty of energy for that. And let's see, that is three we've done. So let's uh, grab the other stuff that will benefit us. This is number four. And I don't need the deep sleep. Uh, that is not as important. That is not as important. Two more. More successive attacks, always good. Pop the new bubble. Uh, time for ability to respond is, is, is okay. Uh, okay, and the clan member dodging. So, you know, I had unlocked a whole bunch of neuronal pathways in my previous go, so that's more than enough, I'd say, to uh, max out a couple things. So, yeah, six skills that I do want to carry over to the next generation. So we're going to do another generation skip. And now, since we have uh, elders in our, uh, in our family that do have mutations, let's just go ahead and summon the whole clan and check a couple of the elders. If you see any elders which have mutations, then uh, it is time. So this elder has a mutation. It is time to just move on and let's get it done. So now all of the stuff that uh, I had earned as babies is now available to the adults. So I'm going to just actually let you guys sit here and see what happens every time an evolution leap occurs. Every one of these things you see, that's uh, more points added on. That's more time. And when you get extra, that's also good. Now, when you've filled out all the requirements for a specific field, you'll get a little bonus. Because you got a set. In this case, I don't have any sets. But let's say you assimilate nutrients from every kind of food. You'll get a bonus for that. An extra bonus for uh, finishing off a category. And, yeah, that's just bonus right there. It's good stuff. Successfully dodged. And that's an extra 5,000 years on top of what that's worth. That's going to be worth an extra 7,500. 
So just do all that stuff, dodge him and kill him. So many things. Apparently it's not hard to scare a giant warthog, but this should be worth something. Yeah! Thorbjarnson's crocodiles, those are those are mean suckers. And sometimes just getting uh, getting more skills gets you up. So we had twelve births, so that adds another sixty thousand years. Zero deaths, and so now we are turning into Auroran Tugenensis, the Millennium Man. And that gives us a very special skill, which is going to be incredibly useful. So first things first, skip the scenes, and we're not in the greatest place right now. We are pretty much all the way across the map from where we started. But it's never a bad idea to uh, build a sleep spot in a place you've never been. So I'm just going to uh, put one right here. Simply because if I come back this way, I would like to be able to sleep at some point. Plus, I want to also be able to see what skills I've unlocked. Okay, lie down, and let's take a look at what we've earned. More neuronal energy can be accumulated, so I get more experience. I get more stamina and energy. Now I can control the emotions, which is very good, and I'll show you about that in just a moment. Uh, more dopamine, so I am uh, less likely to experience problems in fear of the unknown and other such things. Further jump. Food poisoning is more effective, that's great. Uh, I can remember one more location. Fewer hits to craft, that is handy. Alright, so over here in particular, these two mutations, these are the ones that will allow you to get up to full level with oviparous and mammal meat. And this one up here is the one I really wanted. But we're not going to do that this episode. Here's what's going to happen, alright? Basically, now you are no longer dependent upon if an enemy sees you and has you in uh, has you in their, their sights and you got the blinky light on the bottom left. Now you can be alert just by holding down the R2 button. That means that you can intimidate at will. When first I gained this capability a while back, a few playthroughs ago, um, I didn't know why I couldn't intimidate anymore, and that's because... I'm no longer, uh, I don't, I don't go into, uh, alert mode anymore just by being seen by an enemy. I have to manually do it. But there's another benefit to alert mode. Uh, and I'm gonna show you that once I exit camp. Although I bet you I'm gonna be attacked by a stalker, but oh well. Let me just grab a stick and grab a branch, make a stick. Come on. Alright, just so I've got some, uh, some things. So you see how I'm schmoving right now. That's because I'm in camp. But when I leave camp, when I leave the range of, uh, of the sleep spot, I'm going to be in regular walk mode. I thought I heard something. Okay, so this, this right now is my normal walk speed. This is my running speed, but if I, while running, I activate alert, my speed goes up, so I'm basically sprinting now. It's using more energy, but I'm also going faster. Doesn't really use much more energy than running, so definitely worthwhile. So now, I can go Turbo Monkey mode, which is great. That's something I want. So alright folks, I think that's going to cut it. Next episode is going to be uh, the journey back to the Tunnel Mouth Oasis, because I just can't get enough, and uh, we will go from there. One last thing that I'm going to make sure I get out of the way is, if you want to save, just go to a sleep spot, quickly go into evolution, and then quickly come back out. That'll in invoke a save. Other things will invoke the auto saves, but the most reliable way to do it is go into evolution and come back out. So I think that's going to be enough for today. I want to thank everybody for watching. Once again, I'm Alex, also known as Solonis Dracone, and this has been Ancestors of the Humankind Odyssey. Thank you very much, and goodbye.